Okay, today might be kind of like a shorter video. I might have to limit my camera time because I just can't get through this today. Today's hard, today's really hard. I've started over like 20 times and I've already like killed one of my batteries uh, that was fully charged <laughs> just by starting over and just by like redoing what I want to say. I keep getting stuck in the weeds of like anticipating that people are going to be extremely judgy and to be telling me that my pursuits should not be my pursuits. And I don't share to be like corrected to the norm. I share to allow, of course, judgment, but I share to like hopefully express a way of living that seems consistent amongst all areas of my life. I want to I want to live in a way that makes me feel alive and I want to live in a way that makes me feel alive and good in uh, most areas of my life. And today I am like sad because of what a relationship, like how that impacted me. And I'm sad because the person that I thought that I was creating something with after we hooked up ghosted me for the second time. And I don't want to be judged on, you know, the type of person that I picked. I don't want to be judged by, you know, blaming me on all this stuff when it's really, you know, it might have something to do with me, but it might not have anything at all to do with me. And I don't want to get stuck in the weeds of defending myself of why I thought that I could have an enjoyable time with somebody who seemed to have lots, lots of red flags. So I just want to say that that did happen. I know it probably in hindsight is easy to pick apart, but I don't feel like, you know, defending myself. I feel like just saying, hey, this is what happened. And hey, uh, even if I did know that it wasn't a good idea and you could tell it wasn't a good idea as, as I've explained it honestly to you, like I don't have to be honest. Like I could tell you, a bunch of lies in order to make it seem like you know I was doing something way better for myself but I, I've chosen to be honest with you and I just want to kind of like let you know if you play with fire sometimes you get burned and it still hurts <laughs> and like sometimes you play with fire and you get to glow in the embers for a while too before you go up in flames so like I think that whatever you want to do with yourself is fine, but like the pain that happens from it is still like, like it's acceptable to acknowledge, at least for myself. So I had kind of an annoying thing happen and I think that's why I'm getting so defensive in the beginning of this because if my friend thinks of this in terms of this, then what does the internet think of this, right? Like it opens myself up for like a lot of judgment and I just don't want that right now. To be honest, I don't want that. Um, I want you to just like kind of see it and you know, know what I did with it really. And know that I was happy pursuing it. It was uncomfortable and not happy after it blew up, but like I was happy doing it. And like it could have been great. So anyways, I expressed during different phases of this relationship with this sketchy guy, I expressed my happiness and my pleasure and everything that I was hopeful for to this friend. And this friend had like basically no sympathy for me when it came to understanding that he'd ghosted me for the second time after we'd hooked up. And she was just like, well, you've had your fun now. And there was like, there was no like, I'm sorry that this person did that with the vulnerability that you shared with them. Like that's how I would have wanted to like have that be expressed to me. That didn't matter if I wasn't in it to win it as far as trying to get him to be my husband. It didn't matter if I was in it to win it just to like have a good time with him. Like it didn't matter the, the why. Like it still was casual and it still was connecting and it still wasn't kind and the fact that another human wasn't kind to me was the part that was um 
that was sad for me. And uh, if my friend, who knew a lot more context than the internet, reacted like that, then that's... Do you understand why I don't want to do this? <laughs> I don't want to tell you that he ghosted me for the second time. And I'm not trying to get your sympathy as far as like, you know, how like it made me feel. I just need you to know that like when you put your your efforts into something unabashedly and unapologetically, like you still have real feelings about it, right? Like, I don't know. I'm not saying that you individually as a viewer, I'm saying the people that kind of like come and find this video and are like keyboard warriors, I don't want to deal with them right now. And so there's a tendency for me to like glaze over this and just not talk about it. But this is, you know, we're going to talk about it because this is what we do. So I had that, that kind of disappointing talk with a person that was, you know, my friend and they didn't understand that like I was devastated. Um, I was devastated from a person that treated me like this and um, because it's like uh, it, it was an ending to what I thought was going to be a great beginning. So there's there's that. You have to come to the realization that that is done now, <laughs> right? Like you'd, you'd had hope, no hope. Hope and then zero hope, like negative amounts of hope. And then like for me at least, it was like, well, if this person that fed me all these lies, so like you go into like this whole pattern of like, was this all a lie? <laughs> Am I just, do I just believe every lie that someone tells me? And the answer is no, I don't think I believe every lie that people tell me. I've dated enough people, I've had enough one night, night stands, like not on purpose, but I have, that like I understand what people do and I'm not like a softie anymore like I'm this isn't my first rodeo but I do like this time was different he felt different he felt like a kindred spirit in so many ways and like I don't know it just hurt more because I believed him I believe that he wanted this the same exactly thing that I wanted the ghosting after the sex always hurts me more And uh, it was hurtful for my friend to just be like, well, you had your fun. Instead of like acknowledging my hurt. It was like, well, if you go pursue these hoary things, you get people that don't treat you nice. <laughs> was basically what the connotation was as far as her, this friend's reaction was. So, there's a giant tendency to like, explain well, I'm not doing hoary things I'm doing things that I think are worth pursuing and it just happens to be not what people talk about so openly um, it makes people uncomfortable and I don't really understand why a female sexual appetite can be uncomfortable for other people um because I try to talk about it in a way that's like uh sort of scientific <laughs> I try to talk about it in a way that's like this is what I'm learning right it's not like all of my conquests or like I don't even think of it in terms of that but it's like hmm My friend doesn't have a lot of experience doing this and so only has an experience of coming from, you know, what it is like to be in a long-term relationship uh, that's committed. So this person also said to me, wow, you're getting a lot of, you know, basically your body count is like getting pretty high. And like that also perturbed me because like, partially if you understood that people, like, didn't want to continue stuff with me. Like, my body count would be really low, much lower than it is. Like, I've had sex with 15 people now throughout my entire life. I'm almost 40. Like, 
I think that's relatively low. But compared to people who have been in a relationship since they were like, you know, in college, and if they weren't really like a, you know, a person that casually dated around, like that seems high. And like, I don't think that there's a lot of context around understanding what it's like in the dating world right now. I had the intentions of hooking up with people for a long time. Every time I hooked up with people. And it's like, just because I have to go and find somebody else once they've ghosted me or once they've stopped talking to me or once we've decided we're not gonna be, you know, anything after the first time, does not mean that I wanted to raise my body count, <laughs> right? Like, it's just the nature of what's happening in society right now. Like, I don't think that people wanna start stuff with people. I think people just want to have pleasure and then get as much pleasure out of that one time as possible, put the energy into, a, like, doing that, and then, like, moving on to grass is greener. Grass can always be greener. And, um, there's not a lot of like working it out with people, working out the kinks, working out your compatibility, working on getting to know people. So when you meet this way, when you meet from the apps, this is, I don't think a unique experience for me. But the person that was like, you know, giving me the feedback, like doesn't know that. So just sees my number, like as in like, oh, I, you have so much more experience now than you did. Your number's getting to be a little high, but it's like relative. It's like relative to like what's going on. So like, just like inflation, right? <laughs> this is like dating inflation. This is like, you know, back in the day, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, maybe 15 like sexual partners in like your lifetime was not seen as, you know, very good. Like that's seen as too many. But like, I think if you actually open your eyes to see like how people like go about things right now, like unless I want to be celibate for the rest of my life, like it's like the body count is just gonna get higher because the the likelihood that I can meet somebody that is going to stick with me <laughs> and do things with me in a repeating manner, um, like it's just gonna get higher and that's just facts. Like unless I stop wanting that, right? Like I could go on a date right now and I could pick somebody nice and I could pick somebody stable and I could pick somebody that would like be a good companion, a, be a good partner, be a good person that was dependable. I could do that. I know how to do that. I was in that type of relationship. I know how to do that. But when you're pursuing something else that is more passionate, um, I'm not saying that you can't have a passionate kind of like relationship. Like I hope that you do. Um, but it's just hard. It's just hard. And I, I don't feel like, I don't feel like being judged on that. Because I'd be judged by people that don't actually know what it's, what it takes to like pursue this with like just unapologetically. Like from a girl's standpoint too. Like, I'm supposed to be a certain way when it comes to this sort of thing, and I'm just not. <laughs> and I'm vocal about that I'm just not. And I I have been sharing stuff that, like, girls don't talk about on the internet. Like, you're supposed to be seen as, like, you know, very Martha Stewart, and this is very, like, not. I get that. And so this content is not for everybody, but, like, I don't want to be, um told what to do about it. I don't like, I don't want to be told, I don't want to, like it still hurts me is what I'm trying to say. And it, I think it's okay for it to still hurt me. 
it's okay for it to be confusing to other people on why I want to do this. It's okay to have it not be what you want to do. So today is hard for me because I'm scared to put this on the internet. Because after, you know, the judgments from my friend that I understand that she doesn't have a lot of idea that she probably even offended me but it's like I think I'm still gonna like obviously publish this video it's just difficult for me to like do do you see that <laughs> uh, and to like keep it honest like I really wish that I'd lied and I'd really wish that like I could lie to you and I really wish that like I'd want different things and I really wish that I could be just like wholesome or you know whatever but like I am just trying to be my most authentic self and I'm just trying to kind of tell you how that's going and uh that's that I guess so I think we can transition now now that we've gotten a little bit past that part, we can transition to like what I did with that. So I was very upset. I was, you know, crushed. And I think it's all like relative to, you know, the time that I put into it or whatever. And it's not like shocking that he ghosted me the second time. So it's like not the worst to my system, but it just hits a little different, right? So it's like a different pain, but like same thing, different pain because the reason for the ghosting was probably different the second time. So anyways, um, I dealt with it kind of like in the way that I know how to deal with it. So the first night, I just like let myself cry. <laughs> I watched this like sad Netflix series, but I still had Netflix from when I got like, you know, a month of it for when I wanted to watch a certain movie or whatever on Valentine's Day. And uh, I normally don't have uh, streaming site video things on my computer because I just get sucked in because I love I love to watch all this stuff so in order to keep up my uh, output during the day and to like stay focused and to like remain on my goals I cancel stuff that sucks me in so anyways I still had it and I was like you know what like I'm just going to allow myself to get a little bit sucked in and to have like a little bit of enjoyment or whatever and so I just watched like a sad series and I didn't know it was going to be sad until like it was sad and then I just bawled. I just bawled like the whole time. I like cried so hard that like I uh, cried off all of my adapaline. And <laughs> it's not good when you're crying off your different gel because it's uh, you know it's water and different gel and it irritates your skin <laughs> when it's watered down. So that was fun. But like I, I needed to do that. I needed to cry. Like part, like I, I, I'm not trying to prevent the hurt. Like I, I, like I was telling you. I, like I just want to like lean into it because that's what I wanted to feel or whatever. In a very like weird emo way, that's what I wanted to do. So I allowed myself to cry because I always feel like if you like hold it in and you like you know convince yourself that you weren't you know, you know this person that I talked to for a month didn't really mean anything. Blah blah blah. <laughs> Like, that might be true, but to me, it did, it did mean something, and the whole ending of everything meant something, and the whole, like, the way it was done meant something to me, and it pained me, and so I allowed myself to feel pain. So, I cried a lot, and then the next day wasn't as bad, and then the next day I convinced myself enough that I should go on an adventure, and then I went to one of the bigger cities around here, and I took myself out to... A cafe and I you know worked all day away from my house and away from you know falling easy into just thinking about things and blah 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 so if I change my surroundings then I change my thoughts and I was just really kind to myself that day and I put a lot of time and effort into looking cute that day and it wasn't even in terms of like trying to find other people to replace him it was just like good for me so I was very sad from that night before, but then like the next day I woke up and I was like, you can do this. You can do better for yourself, Michelle, and you will do better for yourself, right? Like don't stay down, allow yourself to be sad, but don't stay down. 
and to like you know change a thought move muscle that kind of thing the thing that my dad always says but the thing that I think my dad kind of like misses is that you need to like stay in it long enough to actually have your thought about your thought you don't need to change your you know thought and move a muscle just to like avoid so I didn't do that. I, you know, it was a two hour ride there and a two hour ride back. So I had plenty of time to like think about things in a sad manner if I wanted to, like to go over all the things that went wrong or like all the lies that might've been told to me or like blah, 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 rehashing things. And uh, to assess my pain, blah, 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 in a way that made sense to me. Um, and to like move on. So I had the two hours on either side to do that but like during the day when I was actually there at my destination I was in it to win it as far as like staying in the moment and getting my work done I worked on my website I actually finished my website yesterday and like I had been putting it off and putting it off because I was scared to like create something and then put it out into the world I was scared to do that like something that was like more mine and people could like you know judge me on something that i've created like if i have an ugly ebay store that's kind of like ebay's fault right like how they arrange things and how they made their choices or whatever i could still kind of blame them but when it's like mostly mine and it's like all of my brainchild like i was a little bit scared to do that and so this series of making this kind of you know this kind of content really allows me to be more who i am because it's like just leveling up the amount of time that i spend being authentic and allowing myself to be to do that in front of people in a way that's judgy so I decided that I would stop delaying my creative whatever on like building this website and <clears throat> I would just finish what I needed to finish and then I would push publish. <laughs> I had had this since February maybe? I don't remember when I first started working on it but I remember like initially copying somebody else's idea because like i'd found like a tutorial on youtube that was like here is how to build a shopify store with luxury in mind and then i realized that it was like as i was like making the the content of my own website match what the, the person was kind of teaching i just realized that it wasn't for me and i like scrapped everything that they kind of like said and it was like days gone like completely wiped out everything and so when I'm at the cafe, I'm feeling like the most like sad about, you know, what's going on in my life for like a while. But I was also feeling like the most like, Michelle, you did something that was originally yours, right? Like I was finishing my website and I'd scrapped everything that I'd copied from somebody else. And I just kind of like went with what I thought was good. And if like I didn't feel the need to change it or anymore or whatever, I was finishing up like the, the little technical things that I'd gotten stuck on. I'd gotten stuck on building a, a website form. I didn't know how to do that. And I didn't know how to create a very simple return method for my customers that was more seamless than the clunky way that was kind of like set up inherently on Shopify. So those two things had like prevented me from finishing it for like two or three weeks. And I was just like in my brain blocked about, you know, what to do about it and then that day after everything was sad for me and I was like, I need some wins. I need to go here and I need to put myself in this fake little French bakery and I need to sit and work by myself on this thing that makes me happy to work on. That's fully mine. And I did. So yesterday I finally finished it and I published it and I was like, good job. Good job self. <laughs> I had like no traffic and like that's kind of like a thing that I have to learn how to do as well but uh, that was exciting to me because it was like <sighs> putting more actions towards accepting my own ideas as as I don't need to edit them down right 
I can just do what I feel is intuitively good and I will just follow it through. <laughs> and uh, so that was good. That was something that was good that I'd been like dragging my feet on. And it's funny how like pain allows you to push through uh, other stuck things because you know when you're super happy you're not in the like in the desire to change things up it's when like you're unhappy that you have desire to change things up right like that's i don't know what psychological thing that is but that must be a psychological thing if you've studied psychology if you have like some sort of degree in it and, and there's a word for that maybe just like leave them in comments because i'd be really interested but uh there must be a word for that or like a uh, a theory behind that or something but anyways I, I don't mean to say that I only had bad conversations about the ghosting with my friends I didn't I had great conversations with two of my friends coming from different points of view actually that helped me that helped me along my journey this week so like I just wanted to express that the bad experience that I had or the, the kind of disappointing experience that I had with my friend made me scared to tell you my internet friends, right? So I do understand that you can be compassionate and you can kind of like still have empathy for my, for my sad thing or whatever um, and not really know me and not really judge me or whatever, like blame me for like what happened. Um, or to try to like correct my behavior. I do understand that you are capable of that, but I'm just a little bit scared to do that and to talk about it publicly right after it happened. <laughs> um, Cause I'm still not doing the utmost that I could be, right? Like I'm sad. I won't be sad for like a ton of time, but I just know that I need to take a little time and step away. So what else did that look like when it came time to like take a little time and step away? So right after the ghosting, I mashed with like a whole bunch of people in my Tinder. And this, I'm just being honest about what I did. <laughs> I mashed with a whole bunch of people and I didn't necessarily like them, but I was like, you know, law of averages. That was like my, my thinking, law of averages. If I just, you know, eventually someone is going to want to do this with me right or like pursue something worth pursuing with me just like law of averages just keep it up you know sometimes i just need to like take a step back and evaluate and sometimes i push myself further into the abyss <laughs> and um immediately after i'd made like all of these um new connections and had really boring talks with a bunch of people or like really weird talks with a bunch of people and that's not what I wanted I just went through and I unmatched all those people it was like taking away everything that I just did and it was like a redo and it was kind of nice and I didn't feel bad because like we didn't start anything there was no connection it was like we either matched or we didn't talk and I just unmatched them because they were not right for me or I just knew that they were not right for me and I just like you know rush matched them rage matched them from you know being ghosted or whatever so like that part's not healthy what i did but i undid it and i realized that i needed to take a step back and i needed to just chill but i also needed other wins for other areas of my life right like i i am a little bit stagnant a little bit stuck on this because i haven't figured out how to get this in a better way from better people that would make you know produce better results for whatever or maybe reassess what I even want from people um, that needs to take time and so I shifted my focus to like other areas of my life that were stagnant like fixing and finishing my website and to be like be proud of myself for that and you know it was much more than <laughs> something that I could control and uh, so I put energy and time into that while the pain was kind of going on so i ate chocolate i ate a bunch of um actually a really horrible flat pizza from target <laughs> i think it was from california kitchen actually it was like a white pizza one of those flat ones it tasted like cardboard it was actually awful so i should have picked a more like 
indulgent comfort food thing but what i'm trying to say is like i tried to pick a comfort food <laughs> like to do that i'm not an ice cream type of person but if i was this would have been like the ice cream week like just doing things to you to like comfort yourself but also have you know good and connecting talks with you know people that truly know you that was something that i like you know i allowed into my life right like there is a tendency to when you're hurting to like be very isolative or at least for me that's what i do and this time i was like some people wanted to reach out to me and i allowed that and some people i reached out to them and i brought up topics that were that i wanted to talk about with them because i can be very giving in terms of like you know i'll want to connect but i won't want to connect on certain topics just because i feel like it's very indulgent to talk about you know pain or whatever <laughs> seemingly self-induced pain at that and so like i i needed my friends this week and i needed to like know that you know i'm worth being in a relationship with and all that kind of stuff and just because like the nature of the ghosting like kind of like crushes your like self-esteem a little bit until like you can do things enough for you to not feel like that so uh that was my that was my way of dealing with things it was to share that i had some pain it was to go do other things it was to change my mental space by changing my physical surroundings and um, to continue on the path of what I had been doing with my other goals and to not let them fall to the wayside. So I continued to go to the gym and that was a great outlet for me because I could like be really mad and like lift my weights and like, you know, do all these things that were like good for me, allowed me to sleep better, allowed me to, you know, feel good or better in my body than I would have if I hadn't have done those things. And um, I had my consultation yesterday well initial consultation yesterday with my naturopath and it was decided that i would meet with the, the head naturopath person and i can completed my intake form today it was very like um detailed on stuff it was very like how does this make you feel kind of thing and it was it was interesting because like the previous questions were like you know what in your body is not going very well and then like the next question is like how does that make you feel about you know the hope for it to change or like, i'd never really i'd never really seen that in terms of like mixing medical things with like how you feel about things sort of deal so i think i am in the right sector of medicine or whatever that kind of needs to understand how to fix my problems so i do feel like i'm on the right path as far as the naturopath as well because randomly the person that i picked to go see i picked because they were in a city that i like to visit because i've been visiting cities as you know to like find new things to like buy for my website and for my inventory or whatever and i go back to this one city that i i particularly like the vibe of it um is comforting to me for whatever reason and so when i saw the naturopaths that are uh, available in my state i picked the one that i recognized where that city was because that's the city i like to go and then it was even more valid in my head after i realized that that person is licensed in the state in which i am from so like the the she started everything from that state and that state has a particular mindset as far as providing quality and as far as like being authentic and real like that state is like known for kind of like no nonsense but providing the best of the best of what you can do and I was like, great, <laughs> that's exactly who I want on my team, right? So I don't know if the plan that they're gonna create for me um, equals the best results. I just know that it feels good for right now. And I do a lot of stuff, as you see, by intuition. And I think that's what that's why I share with you all these little things that I do, so that you can see the consistency in which how I make my decisions. So it's not like I just go by intuition when it comes to like finding a partner in whatever kind of relationship that I want. 
I go by intuition and how it makes me feel and feel alive and feel connected and feel good and like almost everything that I do. The way that I found the bakery to work at that day when I needed to like cheer myself up wasn't to go on to like Yelp and see what like the best bakery in town was. It was to like go by what I'd spontaneously seen in my Instagram feed by somebody and just like pick that one. Um, so I had, for dinner, I had driven by this nice steakhouse or whatever that looked good. It was in the area that my, my bakery was, and so I did my work at the bakery, and then I went to dinner, and uh, obviously I'm expecting to like talk with other people, but at my dinner, I talked with this old nice guy, like older, not, not as old as like my dad, but like older than me, and he was kind of like there by himself, and we had this like nice talk about like the city the city which I lived in, kind of like why I was there and like it was very just nice to like talk with and connect with a person especially on that day that I felt not connected with like most people in my surrounding area, right? So it was just nice. It was nice to like work on stuff but it was also nice to like spontaneously make little choices that equaled happiness and to like just live it and commit to it and just see how it works out right so like not everything spontaneous and, and like with little planning turns into a bust like most of the time it's fun and good um so i also maintained like what i provided for other people right so i didn't just like go into my shell and just was like completely like selfish and was like oh my god i'm hurting from my ghosting and i didn't forget that i was also a friend to people <laughs> i didn't forget that i was a daughter i didn't forget that i was you know all these other roles that i had i still did them I did them with a little thorn in my side, but I still did them, you know, like I still tried to put my effort, my all effort into them. And uh, that's how, that's how it was. And I think that like, it, it even plays out into this video. It's like, I don't think that I'm doing like a great service by just making content, but I am showing up for you when I don't want to show up. I'd much rather just kind of like do my thing quietly in my house and just kind of not open myself up to this shitstorm that could come from this. Um, so I wanted to show up for you because we're building something. And, uh, don't know what I'm building towards yet. Like in terms of like my relationships with people, I do think that I have to take a little bit of time in order to, you know, reevaluate how to not be completely hurt by the next person, but also how to like be authentic to myself and like what my wants are. Like, do I still want what I want? Do I just have to go about it in a different way? Do I just have to be smarter? Do I have to pick better? Do I have to listen to the red flags a lot sooner? Do I have to have a shut off? You don't know how people are going to be. And so you need to allow them enough time to unfold to you. But uh, as I said, it's kind of a complicated process because you know, part of what I want to, to do with somebody is to not have all of my safety nets up. And so therefore you will have times where you're crushed like this. So I think the only thing that I can do is just to like have some sort of pain uh, tolerance, right? Like if I understand that it's gonna be painful, I have to understand that it's going like, the process of getting out of that pain has to be kind of thought about as well. So I think that's kind of like what I have to do. I also got some news that was interesting this week in terms of how it could shape my future of what it looks like when my lease is up. So um, I'm gonna look into some things this week and I'm going to see if uh, 
options that I didn't know existed now do exist and to see if I should stay here but to um, maybe get like a, a more permanent residence versus a, a renting residence and see about that. So it's kind of like exciting, it's an exciting time. And I want to talk about something that I haven't talked about publicly yet is that in terms of like what I'm doing with myself as far as like my business and everything, eventually I would like to build my own business that has something related to do with uh, something that I create myself. And I think I'm slowly working my way up to that. Like that's that was like the whole Shopify store. I still have items that i'm finding like there's still items they're not like new items there's the same types of items that i would find from my ebay store so it's not like fully all on me right like if the store fails i can blame like the items that i put in the store but if i build a shopify store and i build and i put items into that store that i myself created right like the, the whole blame is on me like the, like the product sucked the website sucked and the way that i tried to reach my audience sucked right like all of those things are kind of like more on me but i'm building towards that i'm building my knowledge of what it takes to do that and to kind of accept that bigger level of responsibility than to um just rely on other platforms to sell my crap so eventually i do want to have my own product and i want to build a luxury product and i want to go back to the state in which i live and i want to source everything very locally there and have it kind of like handcrafted or work with people that would handcraft certain elements of the thing that i want to make and i want to do everything in kind of like a natural way like meaning i want to create like if i have something to do with fabric and i want to have it be dyed a certain color i'd want to use like tea with the, the fabric or I'd want to use like a natural dye where it's like imperfect but it's also like beautiful because it like it came from nature. So I want to work towards that goal and I've had that goal in my head for like so long but I've never actually put any like it was very pie in the sky, completely pie in the sky. And it was very like long term kind of like, oh, maybe when you're bored and you're like 100, you could do that. <laughs> it won't really matter because it's at the end of your life, right? So um, I'm trying to work up towards accepting that I want to do this with myself and work up towards having the balls to do it. And kind of like having the balls to do it is kind of talking about it publicly. It like makes it real, more real than just kind of keeping it to myself. Or telling a few people or whatever i am still keeping it vague number one because i don't want people to steal my idea and number two because like i kind of you know it's secret to my public life because i want it to be i want it to be more organized before i actually like tell you guys right like so and i'm still not trying to sell to you i'm not trying to create this vlog series or whatever so that you can be like my core audience i don't even think that the people that watch me would even want the thing that i'm trying to make two different audiences i think but anyways if there is some overlap that's nice but i'm not trying to sell to you is what i'm trying to say i'm just excited to kind of express to you that i am building up enough confidence that i will eventually fully accept my creative like ideas and and to and to like because it takes courage to go after what you want and i don't know if i have that yet in terms of going after this but um in different ways i've been trying to tell you that i have courage to go after things that are hard to pursue and creating this video is kind of like one of those ways in which i'm telling you that I'm trying to pursue something very vulnerable on the internet for a benefit and talking about it even though I'm scared is part of that. So anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this today. I'm sorry that I don't have better news for you as far as what's happening with my love life, but I root for you in your whatever you're doing 
and your real life and your goals and i hope that you root for me and i will see you guys in the next video next week